السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله على إحسانه وشكر له على تفضله وامتنانه ولا إله إلا الله تعظيما لشأنه وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله داعي إلى رضوانه وعلى آله وأصحابه وإخوانه أما بعد إخواني في الله ما زلنا في درسنا عن أشرات الساعة We are still continuing with the signs of the day of judgment we said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in the Quran فَقَدْ جَاءَ أَشْرَاتُهَا That verily the signs of the day of judgment have appeared amongst us. From the signs we have taken so far, number one, the coming of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number two, the splitting of the moon. Number three, the death of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number four, the conquest of Jerusalem. Number five, the plague of Amwas. Number six, there will be a lot of wealth amongst the Muslims that they will not find anyone to take sadaqah. And number seven, fitna. There will be a lot of trials and tribulations in this ummah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam, he says, Inna bayna yadayi sa'a fitanan ka qita'i layl al-mudlim yusbihu rajulu mu'minan wa yumsi kafiran wa yusbihu mu'minan wa yumsi kafiran He says the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam, before the day of judgment, there will be a lot of fitna, there will be a lot of trials and tribulations of the ummah. So much so that a person is a believer in the morning and in the evening he is a disbeliever. Another man is a believer in the evening and in the morning he is a disbeliever. Ikhwani fillah, last night we took one of the greatest fitna, the first great fitna to happen to this ummah. And that is the killing, the assassination of the Khalifa of the Muslims, Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anh, that occurred in the year 35 of the Hijri calendar in the month of Dhul Hijjah. The Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam, one day he was sitting in a garden. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari comes and he says, I'm going to guard the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam today. So Abu Bakr comes and he asks for permission. Abu Musa goes to the Prophet and gets permission for Abu Bakr and he's told, إِذَن لَهُ وَبَشِّرْهُ بِالْجَنَّةِ Tell him he's allowed to come and see me and give him a promise that he'll be amongst the people of Jannah. Then Umar comes. He asks for permission. Abu Musa Ash'ari goes to the Prophet ﷺ. He says to him, Umar is at the gate he wants to enter. He says to him, say to Umar that he's given permission وَبَشِّرُ بِالْجَنَّةِ and tell him he's amongst the people of Jannah. Then Uthman radiallahu anhu he comes and he asks for permission. He goes Abu Musa Ash'ari to the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ says, after a short while, he says, إِذَن لَهُ وَبَشِّرْهُ بِالْجَنَّةِ عَلَىٰ بَلَاءٍ تُصِيبُهُ Allow him to come and tell him he be amongst the people of Jannah, but a great calamity, a great musibah shall befall him. So Uthman, رضي الله عنه, he used to know that the Prophet ﷺ had told him that you are going to die as a shaheed, there will be a lot of fitna against you. Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, one day he said to Uthman, Ya Uthman, perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sayuqammisuka qamisan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will dress you with a shirt. And if the people, fa'in arada minka al-munafiqoon, an tanzi'ahu fala tanzi'ahu. If the munafiqoon, the hypocrites, want you to leave this qamis and to remove the qamis that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will dress you, do not accept to remove that dress. So you understood clearly from this, that I have been made the Khalifa of the Muslims. There's no way I am going to resign from my position based on the advice of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So that he does not create a sunnah that every time a person is displeased with their leader, they go tell him, resign, leave your post for no valid reason. Ikhwani fillah, Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anh, he was killed by the Mujrimin, led by the Yahudi Abdullah ibn Saba, in the year 35 of the Hijri calendar. And the people of Medina were in tears. They were in shock. How can they kill a person that the Malaika is ashamed or shy in his presence? The Prophet ﷺ used to say, Ala astahi min rajulin tastahi minhu al malaika. I'm not am I not going to be shy regarding a man that the angels of Allah are shy regarding him? So how do they these people they do they not have any shyness? Al-Hayam al-Iman, 
They don't have any shyness. They dare kill Uthman ibn Affan, who was married to two daughters of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So the people were in a lot of sadness. The people of Medina. Naila, the wife of Uthman radiallahu anha, she sent her fingers were cut by this mujrimin, and the shirt of Uthman filled with his blessed blood. He said she sent it to Damascus, to Damascus, and told the leader of Damascus, Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. You are from the same tribe and the same family as Uthman. We ask you to revenge, to ask you to give justice to your brother Uthman ibn Affan. He has been killed unjustly. And the people of Damascus, they, showed, they saw the shot and they saw the fingers of Naila, the wife of Uthman. They all started crying and all of them started demanding justice for Uthman ibn Affan. There was no leadership for the Muslims for a few days. The Sahaba, they say to themselves, it is not possible for us as Muslims to stay without a leader. And they all agreed that the best man to be a leader for them right now after Uthman, no one is better than Ali ibn Abi Talib. They went to Ali ibn Abi Talib, they told him, Nubayuka bil Khilafa, we take you as our leader, as our Amir al Mumineen. Farafad. He refused. He says, I am pleased to be a wazir. I am not worthy of this post. They told him, Wallahi, you are the most worthy of this post. You are the cousin of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You are from the family of Prophet alayhi wa sallam. And they mentioned many of his good attributes. And they said, you are the leader of the Muslims from now on. And all the Sahaba and all the Muslims, they gave him bay'ah, allegiance. They said to him, Nubayuka ala sam'i wa ta'ah, fil manshati wal makrah. We give you our oath of allegiance in every situation, either difficult or easy situations. You are a Khalifa, we shall give you full obedience, including Talha ibn Ubaidillah and Zubair ibn Awam. So they gave him the oath of allegiance. But the Sahaba in Medina, every day they walk the streets and they see the people walking in the streets are the killers of Uthman. How do you think that fills in their heart? They're seeing the killers of Uthman walking in the street. So they go to Ali, Yo Ali, Ya Ali, are you not going to take revenge for Uthman? Are you not going to take care of these people and take revenge for Uthman? These guys killed Uthman and they're walking on the streets of Medina. Ali says, no, not yet. Ali says, not yet. Talha and Zubair, they insist, please take revenge, finish these people off. They killed the Khalifa, Uthman ibn Affan, kill Kill them as they do as they did. Take revenge for Uthman. Take revenge for your brother. Ali refuses. Why does he refuse? Number one, it is in Medina. If a battle, these guys are many in number. If we start fighting them and they fight back, many Sahaba are going to lose their lives. Women are going to be raped. Children are going to be killed. The mosque might be destroyed. This is haram. How can I fight in haram? So Ali ibn Abi Talib was waiting for the opportune time to take action against this Mujrimin. And this was not the time. We have to be patient, things cool down, then we shall take action on this Mujrimin. But Talha and Zubair, radiallahu anhuma, they were not pleased with the opinion of Ali. And Ali ibn Abi Talib is one of the geniuses of history, not only of Islamic history, but of humankind history, history, complete history. He's a genius, mashallah. Umar used to ask for his opinion, Abu Bakr used to ask for his opinion, the Prophet ﷺ used to ask for his opinion. He's an intelligent man. So Talha and Zubair, they're not very happy. And these are two people who also promised Jannah. So they leave the city of Medina and they go to Mecca. To go to Mecca, why? They want to meet Ummul Mumineen Aisha bint Siddiq. They want to meet Aisha, the daughter of Abu Bakr, the wife of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and ask her to assist them in this endeavor of seeking justice against the killers of Uthman. These people have killed Uthman. We cannot let them go. It will become a habit of people killing every time and they let go. No, we have to take justice. So they came and they spoke to Aisha. And she said, they say to her the following verse, لا خير في كثير من نجواهم إلا من أمر بصدقة أو معروف أو إصلاح بين الناس. There is no good in private speech except for one who commands three things, and from the things mentioned in the verse is bringing unity and peace amongst the Muslims. So Aisha radiallahu anha, she saw that she had to take action as the mother of the believers regarding this issue of the killing of Uthman. Hafsa wanted to join Aisha radiallahu anha. But her brother Abdullah ibn Umar said to her, stay in your house. Do not live here. 
I do not allow you to leave. So she didn't go with Aisha. So Aisha, radiallahu anha, she left with Talha and Zubair, and they went to Basra. And they gathered an army, and they managed to take revenge amongst the people who killed Uthman from the people of Basra. Ali ibn Talib was in Medina at the time, and he was very distressed with this news. He was not happy. These people are taking action. It is not yet the time. Things have to cool down first. Things have to subside first. Then we can take action. So he gathers an army of about a thousand people and leaves the city of Medina to go to Basra. As he's leaving, Abdullah ibn Salam comes to him, holds his horse, he tells me, Amir al-Mu'mineen, O oh, Ali ibn Talib, do not leave the city of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu If you leave Medina, I fear the rule will never return to the city of Medina. Al-Hasan ibn Ali, the son of Ali, says to him, Oh my father, please do not leave the city of Medina. Things are going to go out of your control. But Ali ibn Abi Talib, he insisted that he has to go meet Aisha, Talha, and Zubair and make peace amongst themselves so this thing does not blow over. So he set out from Medina until he came to Basra. So two armies, the armies of Talha, Zubair, and Aisha, they come out of Basra and the army of Ali is coming from Medina. So Ali sends an ambassador to go meet with Aisha عنها, and ask her what is happening. So she, he sends Al-Qaqa ibn Amir. Al-Qaqa ibn Amir is one of the bravest people in history. This is a man who destroyed the Kuffar, the Persians, in the Battle of Qadisiyah. Amazing. Is a, one man is equal to 1,000 men, as mentioned by the historians. One man is equal to 1,000 warriors. Al-Qaqa ibn Amr. So this guy, he goes and he meets Aisha radallahu He says, Ya Ummah, my mother, what has brought you here? She says, Wallahi, I have not come except to make peace amongst the Muslims, to bring the Muslims together. This issue of the killing of Uthman has divided the Muslims. We need to, we need to control this issue. al qaqa ibn Amr says, that is an excellent opinion. I hold the same opinion. What do Talha and Zubair, what are their opinions? Please call them, I hear them. So Talha and Zubair, they come. So al qaqa asks both of them. I spoke to the, my mother, Aisha, and she says she came for peace. Why did you two also come? They all agreed they came for peace. So al qaqa ibn Amr says to them, you went to Basra and you killed 600 people from the people who participated in the killing of Uthman ibn Affan. And now 6,000 people from the people of Basra want revenge, they want to fight. You have added more fire to the fuel. There's more fire, you've not reduced the fire, the fire has increased. Our opinion in the camp of Ali is we want things to cool down. Then the people, the family of Uthman ibn Affan, they can come and ask for their revenge, ask for justice, and we have a formal court system, and people are judged in a court system, not you go jungle law and go take action in your own hands. This is not the proper way of doing things as Muslims. Jungle law is not allowed. We want a court, people are brought, witnesses are brought, they defend, and judge is issued, judgment is issued among, to these people. So Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, as long as things are now clear, that you guys and us guys were the same voice, we want to make peace, we want this justice to be given to Uthman ibn Affan, alhamdulillah, everything has ended, there's no problem amongst us. And the Muslims were very happy, they were all happy that there is peace amongst the Muslims. But the group of the Yahudi, Ibn Sauda, Abdullah ibn Saba, al-Yahudi, la'natullah alayhi, this man who entered Islam pretending to be a Muslim, but he had his Yahudi faith with him. Ha, he thought to himself, now we have been caught. If Ali and the group of Aisha and Talha and Zubair, they have made peace, they will definitely become allies and they will attack us with one force. So we need to take some action tonight, not tomorrow, we need to take action tonight that will save us from our doom. So they plotted, Abdullah ibn Sabah, he says to them, I am dividing you into two groups. So he sends a group to the party of Ali, and he sends a group to the people of Basra, Aisha, Zubair, and Talha. Then he sends another group. He says, that group that I've sent, go kill them. That group that I've sent over there to Ali, go kill them. Subhanallah, he's making people from his own group fight. So the people in the camp of Ali, of uh, Talha, and Zubair, and Aisha, at night, they're shocked. People have started fighting. 
They're killing each other. Ali has attacked us. Ali has attacked us. Ali has attacked us. He has betrayed us. He has broken our promise. We made a peace agreement. Ali is a betrayer. So they start taking their swords. The same thing in the camp of Ali. People are fighting. There's confusion. No one is knowing what is going on. And they're claiming, ah, the group of uh, Talha, Zubair and Aisha, they're attacking us. There's war. So the Muslims, subhanAllah, the Sahaba amongst them and the Tabi'een, they took their swords and they started fighting in a state of confusion and they do not know what is going on. Talha ibn Ubaidillah, he was not pleased with this. So he tells the Muslims, he starts stopping them, stop the fighting, it's not worth fighting. But Ikhwanifillah, when fire becomes very great, even a wise man cannot stop it. When fire of fitna becomes very great, even the hukama, they are weak when it comes to that. So they, he tried to Talha ibn Ubaidillah, and he was amongst the first ones who were killed. Anha. One of the people promised Jannah. One of the greatest of the Sahaba was killed, and his face fell flat down on the grounds of Basra. And the war started. Then Zubair ibn Awam, the disciple of Prophet Muhammad, as mentioned in the hadith, the Haruri, the he was also killed. And war began amongst the Sahaba. Ali is trying to control his group, and this other Aisha is trying to control his group, but they cannot control anything. And people started even attacking Aisha anha, as she was on her camel. And her camel was filled, the hodaj, the cover of the camel, it was filled with arrows, and they wanted to kill her. But Alhamdulillah, she managed to escape. I forgot something very important. As Aisha anha, she was coming to Basra, she passed a well of the tribe of Bani Amr. And the dogs started barking at her. And she remembered. She remembered something that she was told over 30 years ago by her husband, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam asked his wives one day, he says, Ayyatukunna, which amongst you, Tambah, will the dogs of Ohohab bark at her? Which amongst you, will the dogs of Ohab bark at her? So she remembered that hadith of Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Another hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, he says, Who amongst you will the dogs of Ohab bark at her? And many people will be killed on her left and on her right, and she will escape death in a very amazing manner. So she remembered this hadith, and she wanted to go back. But Zubair ibn Awam told her, Oh, mom, our oh, mother, please, you're going to make peace amongst the Muslims, so let us go into this battle. So Aisha radallahu anha, as the battle of Jamal, this is called Ma'arakatul Jabal or Mawqi'atul Jamal. It was very intense. She was almost killed, radiallahu anha. And she escaped in an amazing manner. After things cooled down and things became known, and many of the Muslims lost their lives, Ali, radiallahu anha, he comes to Aisha, and he remembers the hadith that he was told by Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The Prophet, alayhi sallam, from his miracles, he used to tell people things of the future. He told Ali, Oh Ali, there will be something that will happen between you and Aisha. When that thing happens between you and Aisha, فردودها إلى مأمنها, return her to her house. He remembered this hadith and said to the brother of Aisha, Muhammad ibn Bakr, go back with our mother to her house in Medina. So she went back to her house in Medina and Ali ibn Talib, he walked in the grounds of the battlefield looking at his companions who was killed and he sees Talha ibn Ubaidillah has been killed. One of the people promised Jannah and he starts crying and he starts crying and he says, Wallahi, I wish I never saw this day. Wallahi, I wish I died 20 years ago. And he saw Zubair ibn Awam also killed in the battle of Jamal. Muslims fighting Muslims, Sahaba fighting Sahaba because of the fitna of the Munafiqun. And he started crying and he regretted it a lot. Aisha radiallahu anha, whenever she used to remember this day, the battle of Jamal, she used to cry a lot until her khimar, her hijab was filled with her tears. And she used to say, Laytani lam akhruj. I wish I did not come out for that battle. Wallahi, I wanted peace for the Muslims. I wish I remained in my own house. And she used to say to Abdullah ibn Umar, you prevented your sister from going out. Why did you not prevent me? Wallahi, if you prevented me, I would have stayed in my house. I would have not gone outside. Uthman ibn Affan was killed. 
and this brought a great fitna amongst the Muslims. A fitna that Muslims started killing Muslims. Sahabas killed some of the Sahabas, and that fitna is continuing to this day. Kindly note, dear brothers, that this issue of Uthman, this issue of Ali, is very controversial. And the issue of Muawiyah also, very controversial. Most of the narrations narrated regarding what happened during this period are blatant lies. Number one, none of the Sahaba participated in any manner in the killing of Uthman ibn Affan. Whoever says otherwise is a slanderer, is a blatant liar. Even if it is mentioned in the books of Ibn Kathir or Imam Al-Tabari, they mentioned everything with Asanid. Some things are true and some things are false. You as a student of knowledge, you have to look at the Sanad and confirm, is it authentic or not authentic? And as a believer, you should not talk about those people who passed away. Their blood is purer than our blood. Their eyes are better than our eyes. For their eyes saw the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa None of you have seen Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alive. None of you were chosen to be the companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One day people asked Ali ibn Abi Talib. He says to Ali ibn Abi Talib that the days of Prophet Muhammad was peaceful. The days of Abu Bakr were peaceful. The days of Umar, Uthman were peaceful. Then you came and there was war. Ali ibn Abi Talib, one of the greatest geniuses, he says to them, because those days, he answers them, he says, because those days, they had the likes of me that I was a minister and an advisor to them. And because of these days, you and your likes are my advisors and the advisors of those people. That's why the difference of time is there. Iqanifillah, with this entered a phase of fitna, that this fitna is going to continue until the day of judgment. In the next lecture, we shall look at a battle that where many Muslims lost their lives, the battle of Siffin between Ali ibn Abi Talib and the group of Muawiyah ibn Sufyan. Wallahu alam. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.